Welcome to studios. Bruce Carey is the superintendent of schools over at uh, at Utica, or Utica School Districts. And Bruce, good morning. The uh, this longer school day issue has been pretty big in the last few weeks. Uh, and you guys now have an extension. So where are we right now? What have we? Uh, what what can we reveal at this point? Oh yeah. First of all, let me say hi, Bill, to you and your staff, and thank you for having me. Glad you made it. Um, uh, like you are aware, um, we requested um, about a month and a half ago a, a, a one-year extension on this extended learning grant in order to give us more time to plan, organize, and get feedback from all the stakeholders, parents, teachers, yeah. the principals of the schools that are, are, are you know, this will be affecting. And um, we were granted that one-year extension. There's actually three options out, out there that the, uh, the state has provided. So has this been, um, I can't imagine Utica is the only one saying, whoa, uh, how do we pull this off in just a month? Oh, uh, are there other districts in the same boat? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, there's uh, eight other districts, and um, what they're doing right now is they're, you know, these are like uncharted waters. Yeah. So everybody's proceeding cautiously. And, uh, uh, you know, nobody really has any answers. We've had a couple school districts that have pulled out of this, this grant. And um, what we're going to do, now that we have the year extension, it gives us the time we need to plan and organize properly. We're going to schedule informational nights at each of the affected buildings, mm -hmm. kind of have like town hall meetings, because we're going to yeah. present the requirements of this program as dictated by the state. And then we're going to seek the feedback from all the stakeholders, the parents, the teachers, the principals, and uh, go from there and then did, start did, making our decisions. Uh, did you expect that, because you're, you're getting some pushback, there's no doubt, the people that are against it are going to be most vocal anyway. Oh, uh, there, yeah, there, you know, there's it, absolutely there is some pushback. Yeah. And it, it, it's like with anything in life, I think, you know, whenever there's change, there, there's always going to be, you know, um, everything is not always, uh, is it going to be, you know, smooth and 100% right, and, right. and, and down the road. And um, so, but I, I would think that this is, you know, I heard somebody talking about this topic the other day and said, well, listen, it's up to the superintendent to stand up and uh, put his fist down and say we're plowing forward and, and, and lead through this. The problem that you have is far more complex, though. Very complex. Um, if you force this through and you do not have the support of your teachers, you do not have the support of the, of the parents, the big issue would be attendance. Absolutely. And, and Bill, and, and that's, a, that's an excellent point you're bringing up. Uh, first of all, the whole concept behind us is when we applied for this grant, the whole concept is to give the students extra instructional time in the classroom in order to increase their grades and their yeah. test scores. So, you know, the, the, uh, the, the concept was, was good. Um, now that, you know, we're, 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 you know, we're, we're getting feedback in, in everything, we want to make sure that we hear everyone, we hear all the stakeholders, and because the key element, like you just said a few seconds ago, is attendance. Yeah. We have to have full cooperation and full support. If we don't, and we don't have the attendance, then the program will not be successful. And we do not want to run a program that will not be access, uh, successful. Right. So we really want to hear from everybody, and that's what these informational nights are going to be about. We will present the requirements. We will present, you know, how we're going to proceed, you know, what the general framework will be. Right. And then we're going to seek the input from all the stakeholders that are going to be involved here, the, the ones that are, you know, actually going to make this work. And then we will make our decisions accordingly and then go from there. Yeah. Uh, how hard is it to, because if you're doing this, and I, I understand every school, every building, uh, grade levels, they all have different times and, and, and procedures when it comes to being at school and, and lunch and, and going home. But the fact that you have to kind of pinpoint this just to a few buildings probably makes it even more difficult, doesn't it? A absolutely. And the reason why we have to pinpoint it to just a few buildings is because obviously we don't have enough money right. out of this grant to do the whole district. Mm -hmm. So we really had to kind of like target it, um, buildings that, that we felt could use the extra help and move them up the accountability status. And, and that was the goal there. Uh, and, and, and this is where we are right now. Yeah. Does the extension affect the amount of money you're receiving at all? According to the way the state gave us three options, or gave uh, everyone who was applied for this grant and received it, uh, there are three options on the table. First option is any school district that will implement this in September 
will get a three three year uh, allotment of money. Uh, if they implement in January, they'll get two and a half years, and if they implement in July of 2015, they'll get two years. Got it. So it, it's like a sliding scale, and that is the the options that the state has given everyone. Yeah. You are uh, obviously been involved in been in school for a long time, very long. Um, where, what do you feel <laughs> he about this? As he says that. Well, um, do you think if you were giving advice, if you're a parent, and do you think this is something that is a good thing? You know, is this something that I don't know? Ten years ago, you thought if this issue had come up, would you be for or against? Are you for or against? Now, I know there's some diplomacy involved because you're the one going to have to administer what what parents want, and you're you're seeking their input on this. But what is your opinion on, on whether or not the district should should have a longer school day? And is this something we should do for the next twenty years, not just two years? Well, that, that, that's a that's a very good question. I'm a firm believer that uh, any time we can give students additional instructional time in the classroom, you know, uh, it, it's a benefit to them. And yes, you know, students are, are, are working at different levels, students are achieving at different levels, but that's how you create and tailor your program. Right. You, you know, you meet the needs of those segments that you are trying to reach and instruct. So, you know, you, you have your students that are needier. So you, you, you have a program, you make sure your program encompasses that, but also you have your gifted students or your, your, you know, your students that are doing very well. And then you, know, you, you, you build a, an accelerated program to get them ready for the next year. Right. Or you do an enrichment program. So there, there's many ways to go here in order to meet the needs of the population that you're serving. So, um, and, and all of that has to come again with the feedback and that's why I think it's a very good idea that we seek this feedback and then make our decisions on this kind of a program because this is a very unique program just based on solely you need the attendance. So Yeah, I, I guess I didn't think about that is that the fact that if you, to do this, you're going to be changing strategies. Absolutely. And if, if you get down this road for two years and it, mis it fails miserably, the attendance is down, you've got uh, teachers that don't participate. I'm assuming if, if a teacher doesn't participate, you have to bring in somebody from another building. That's correct. And now schedules are could be conflicting there. But um, if you go all out at this thing and fail, it's not going to help you in terms of uh, uh, the people's confidence for the future and, and when it comes to other opportunities for grants and for the state, the perception of the state, it, it probably could really send you backwards. That's yep, and that's an excellent point. And that is the purpose of having these informational nights and kind of like these town hall meetings yeah. is to you know to seek the input after everything's presented answer as you know many questions as we possibly can clear up any of the rumors that are going out you know going around out there to make sure everybody has fact right and then when we hear the feedback um, you know from the from the stakeholders the parents teachers principals uh, we will be able to judge from that point um, how to how, you know how to proceed? Yeah. What are some of the, are there some rumors going around now? And and you want to set the record straight on any of them that are floating floating out there? Well, you you you, you, you know you there, there were things out there like um, um, you know nine to five. I mean the, the times you know really, the headline the headline got it wrong right off the bat. Some of some of the some information of you know we we want to clear up, and we just want to make sure everybody has factual correct information so that they can make their decisions based on correct information right. and not misinformation. Yeah. When is the drop dead date that you guys have to be able to make your decision on whether or not you're moving forward? Well as of uh, today I don't have a drop dead date um, but I can tell you this we're going to be moving very quickly because we need to gather all this information, first of all present it, then gather all this uh, information and feedback, and then start making some very you know, you yeah. know, hard decisions here. And we don't want a program that's going to fail for some of the reasons you just mentioned. Yeah. We want to be successful. We, we want everybody on board. And uh, that is where we're going to proceed and what we're going to try to do. If you have an information night at one school, and I, I'm sure it's open to anybody, any parents of any students. Yes. But say one school is 90% of the parents think this is a great idea and you want to go forward. Then you go to another school and only 20% of the parents want to do it. 
can you pick and choose in this grant or is it is it we're taking the grant or we're not taking the grant well the grant has been approved for the buildings that were written into the grant so of course you know that is something you know will as we proceed and move forward you know we we, we would really have to research okay there, there I can't give you an answer right yeah. now because again you know we have certain grant and state guidelines that we have to follow by regulation or by law therefore we you know we, we again we're going to have to gather the information and then um, do some research and then make our decisions and we're going to do yeah. this very as quickly as possible because I, I think it's very important that uh, we uh, you know er everybody knows the direction we're going in and that's why sure. we're doing this do you know uh, when it when it's going to start the informational sessions um, the opening of school obviously is very hectic for everyone um, students parents everyone teachers um, we're going to wait if you know at least two three four weeks after that so everybody's settled into the opening of school and then we'll probably start these sessions at the end of september beginning of october if we do them any earlier things yeah. just are very hectic because sure. everybody's Transition getting acclimated to the yeah. new school year and we want to make sure yeah. the school year like it has for the last few years opens up very smoothly i, I assume you've uh, spoken to other players uh, out there other superintendents that are considering this that have been awarded the, uh, the grant um, and if you have what, what did you find from them well, I think there are uh, a lot of them are in the same boat we are. Yeah. Um, and they're proceeding, uh, you know, cautiously. And, um, uh, you know, they nobody has all the answers on this because this is something really new. And uh, they're going to um, call it and make the decisions as they progress. Sure. Um, don't, it, it is frustrating, I would imagine, that we you get the boy kids they 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 need more time you got to have more time for these kids it's not they they need to learn more they're not learning like they used to all of these and a lot is uh, is is just not proper perception but then when you do make the move um you you find resistance and that's frustrating i think as it disrupts people's lives and changes their lives well you know bill i i kind of sit i kind of take a stand back and in, in, in a couple steps and i take a look at the whole picture yeah and i i understand i i do understand it's a change and in some in some lives it's a big change um but the going back the whole the whole concept and the whole goal here was to give extra classroom time in order to raise student achievement levels that's what the whole goal and the goal is a very good goal yeah and we just want to make sure that when we execute this and when we implement it it is done right because if it's if we can't do it right off the bat and the support is not there then we're not going to move forward because you know like you said earlier um, uh, it's just critical yeah. that we do things the right way and that's what we try to do every day in that we move forward on this in a positive way uh, failure not an option I mean, you really have to know that this is going to succeed in order to go forward. And one more. And if we were to offer to host one of those informational sessions and broadcast it live, would you be open to doing that? Um, I can get back to you on that question. <laughs> but <laughs> as I, 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 I let me tell no, no, let me yeah. tell you why. Um, as we put these meetings together and organize them, you know, obviously, uh, you know, we'll take that into consideration now that the, the request is in. Yeah. But we will um, definitely. Uh, uh, look at that request and if we can do it in a way you know then I, I have no problem yeah with that'd that. be nice I have people, no problem with that people because who couldn't make one could could tune in uh, maybe that's uh, and then it lives on the uh, lives on the web as well uh, since I since I've been you know since I have started this position uh, my philosophy is is that we you know we answer all questions um, we're open to the media we're open to the public and uh, it's just important and the reason for that is uh, it's important that the correct information gets out there all the time because you, you, you know you always have misinformation and we just want to make sure that the correct information yeah. is out and I think it's very important and your next job of course will be in radio I believe uh, right I mean the well if you <laughs> offer a me a sidekick opportunity here <laughs> hey, Bill, if you offer me a position <laughs> after I retire I'll gladly come here every all right, all right. <laughs> there you have it now that's official uh, Bruce Karam, good man, thank you. Uh, we'll see what comes of all of this. Bill, thank you very much for having me. It's always a pleasure being on your show, and thank everyone here. Christine with an update.